All right, so today we have mono white control. Very clean, very straightforward list here. I made this list actually back when Kaldheim came out, or um, maybe just a little bit after Kaldheim released, but I just haven't got around to actually making a video about it. But and I just, just you know, it was just not a very good deck. Like, don't get me wrong, the deck is good. It's just it's super polarized though. That's what I hate. I just hate decks that are just super polarized. It feels like okay, either I'm gonna crush this matchup or I'm just gonna. I mean, it's an auto concede. If I play against like Urian Emergent Ultimatum decks, it's basically an auto concede against that deck. I mean, you just don't have tools to fight that deck. If I play against like Demir Rogues or anything with counters, a lot of counters in it, I don't have tools to fight it. But decks that it is good against, right? Slower deck, like mid rangey decks or maybe aggro decks, uh, mono red, mono white decks, mono black aggro, like. All the aggro type decks, you know, this is what it's made to fight against, obviously. And we're limited with white, so I mean, you gotta you gotta do with what you have, you know. So starting off the deck list, four glass caskets to get rid of those pesky foxes that like to sleep in, you know, in the forest. You know, just okay, grab them, put them in a glass casket, and put them in the forest. Uh, four revitalize. As, as a control deck, obviously drawing cards, but gaining life to survive against aggro. Birth of Melitus, land drops, making blockers, gaining life. Maze Mind Tomes, drawing cards, gaining life. Scrying against aggro. See a theme yet? Gaining life, drawing cards. <laughs> okay, so three Redanes. This card is really sick, and the fact that it's a double-sided card means you can run more than just you know two copies or one copy. Because the legendary just flip on either side. So this card, though, most times I'm going to say it's here, right? So we cast it on the Valkmira Protector Shield side. It makes everything very annoying. Like if they have like one ones, they hit, they don't hit you for any damage at all. If they go wide, you know, there's no damage. Every point of damage that gets hit to you gets reduced by one. So that two or three power creature, that's going to hit you for one less damage. It makes it super annoying. It also works in combat. Right, so if I'm like blocking a 2-2 with my Skyclave, I kill their 2-2, but they don't kill my Skyclave because it only gets hit for one. Also, if they target you or a creature, they have to pay one mana. Otherwise, it gets countered. They can't like end step, you know, end step target one of your creatures with a two mana. And then if they don't have mana, it's like, oh, it just automatically counters the spell. It, it makes everything very, very annoying. And it makes them hard to kill you, which plays more into your board wipes. Okay, so four Skyclaves, of course, that's your, you know, that's your standard answer in white. Uh, two Shatters on top of four Doom Scars because I wanted the extra two Wraths. Two Starnheim Unleashed, this is our finisher. Two Cosmos, this is for drawing cards, gaining life. Two Elspeth, standard answer all, and to get um, Skyclave back or Ugin back from the graveyard. Two Armirius Call, that's a finisher, but also a land in a pinch. And then Ugin's our finisher too, of course. Two Arden Veils, you can beat them down with Arden Veils in a you know in a slow like top deck matchup. You can just beat them down with a bunch of Arden Veil tokens. Not likely, but I mean it will happen. Thirteen planes, and this is my favorite uh Kaldheim planes art, you know, like right here. This is awesome. Two crawling barons, that's also the another finisher. Two field of ruins for destroying, you know, any faceless havens or any other special lands you want two radiant fountains for gaining a little bit extra life helps get cosmos elixir start drawing cards okay and besides all these other win cons so crawling barons ugin amirius call starnheim unleashed beating them down with redanes and skyclaves and then ardenvale tokens besides those win cons you know the the majority of the win cons is just simply controlling them out of the match. Like aggro decks, once you wipe the board and then they start top decking, they're just like, I don't like this game anymore. Mm. That's usually, everybody knows that plays control. So conceding, demoralizing the opponent is the majority of the win con. You don't actually usually beat them down to zero health, but sometimes it does happen, and we can do that, especially with Crawling Barons and Ugins, man. You can start clocking them real fast. So I want to switch a couple things around here. These, these are the CMC mana costs, how it has organized, but we want to go... This is on two, okay? So just look at the curve, because you want to foretell this on two. This can be foretold for two. 
This can be cast for three, but it's also on four. We'll just leave it on three for now. This is a land. So, but it's it's seven mana. So it comes right after Elspeth and right, right before Ugin, but it's somewhere in there, but we'll just put this on the land slot. So this is the curve you can see. Very concise, very clean curve, okay? On turn two, you're going to be wanting to do one of these things, basically. Usually Tome or, or Birth of Melitus or Remove a Creature, right? Or Foretell a Doomscar. Turn three, you want to be casting either Doomscar or Skyclave, probably. Sometimes Redane, maybe if you're on the play and you're going against like Mono White Snow. <clears throat> and then turn four, that allows you to either cast your Cosmos or Double Spell. You know, do like a, a you know, Birth of Melitus and then do a Foretell a Starnheim or Foretell another Doomscar or something. Or Birth and Maze Mind Tome, same turn. Or Birth and Activate Tome. When you get to four, you start double spelling. Five, of course, would be your Elspeth Conquers Death or your Odd Plays, Skyclave into a Glass Casket or a Birth of Melitus, something like that. Six, again, that's another double. It's either a double, triple, or, or you get to sit here and do tons of things with this okay activate starnheim activate tomes cast revitalize you can start drawing cards gaining tons of life and then if you have cosmos looks down it's like solid man solid so yeah the curve is really nice you can see and then sometimes you want to have this on here anyways and these ones you're probably going to be snowballing i mean uh, not snowballing but uh sandbagging these anyways so we're just going to say put these over here. So yeah, if you cast this on four against aggro, you're going to be sandbagging these anyways. Because this is going to be on three after you foretell it. And then you're going to cast this later. So yeah. The curve, as you can see, is a very nice curve. Valkmira Protector Shield. That's MVP of the deck in my opinion. But I mean, a lot of the cards are sweet. Like like this, this um, Cosmos Elixir, like nobody plays it. It's a very sweet card. Of course, it just gets blown up by, you know, binding of the old gods and just, you know, um, it gets exiled by Skyclaves. Like, there's a lot of ways to remove it, but I mean, there's a lot of ways to remove everything. Binding hits everything. So I think that argument's kind of silly. Like, oh, you just just destroyed by artifact removal. Well, yeah, I mean, everything gets destroyed. Like, they have board wipes. Do you play creatures? People still play creature decks. I mean, it is what it is, man. It's a good card if you get it going. You have to set it up, though. You have to set your board up, right? You have to wipe the board. You have to gain some life and then get into it. And then from there, you keep the board clean. It just gives you a huge advantage. You start pulling away. And a lot of times, Amiria's calls really are just, just finishers. Create two 4-4s. Four maybe make some, some of these other creatures indestructible. And then just beat them down. And Starnheim. So let's talk about this card. This card's awesome, right? Not really um, played that much, but this card is really, really sick. So if we have eight, if we have nine mana on the field, right, we can make four, four, four angels with vigilance and flying. Four of these four, four token angels with vigilance and flying, man, for nine mana. So do the math. Four of them, that's 16 damage, dude. And they have vigilance. So yeah, you can basically kill them in two turns. And they may be already even close to being dead, so... Starnheim's a great finisher. And it's undervalued. I feel it's underplayed. But it's heavy white, so I guess, you know... It's a great card, though. I mean, at least like a one-of, but like I, I like having two of them, man, because just you want to be... Even in the in a pinch, man, you just cast four mana, you get a 4-4 four, four angel token. Like, that's not bad in a pinch either, so... All right, let's go check the deck out. Let's go Wizard1701 with the double Z. The misspelled Wizard1701. Because someone took the single Z wizard name and you had to pick wizard. You can't just get around not picking wizard. Birth of Melitus on two, that's perfect. Shatter is perfect because I'm going against creature based deck. Rule, I have no idea why I keep playing Gruul. So we do birth here, obviously. Get our fourth land drop for Shatter. And then we have Cosmos Elixir after that to start regaining some life and 
hopefully start drawing some cards too. But I mean, here it's pretty, pretty basic. I'm gonna skyclave this love struck. Yeah, we do this to stall the board, keep them off great hinge, stuff like that. And he doesn't have any good attacks either right now, so. Okay. It doesn't attack. <laughs> Alright, so here I'm going to cast Birth of Melitus. Get our land drop and then... I think I want to just foretell this Starnheim right now. Get that out of the way. <coughs> Not sure why he didn't attack, but that's better for us that he didn't attack, so. Alright, cast his Bone Crusher. Yeah, you get a card. He's gonna get another card off Shatter. Lock the most damage, obviously. One, two, three, four. I can make two four fours right now, or I can just simply making two four fours is kind of efficient with my mana as well, though. But I don't like it because he casts Embercleave next turn. I don't want to wrath my angels away. That's that's my win con. At least well, one of my win cons at least. So we just wait for him to do the stupid Embercleave, stupid card. Great hinge. <clears throat> wow. Instantly punished. Well, now I just pretty much need an Ugin. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. So one more mana, I can make three angels. Just go ahead and gain the life so we can draw the card. All right. Just pure lands, huh? Pure lands. Gold span dragon. Well, I mean, this is going to be one hell of a wrath, but the problem is he has great hinge, so. <coughs> yeah, this is going to hurt. I'm just going to scry here. Last casket. I guess it's for a follow-up play that he has. That's fine. And then he has Ember Cleave, right? No, no Ember Cleave? Okay. Why do I get all my shatters, man, against a dent? Like, ah, oh, that's so annoying. I have four Doom Scars. I have two shatters. I draw the shatter. Like, well, I would rather draw the Doom Scar right now so I don't draw a card. Stupid, man. Like, straight. That is stupid. I mean, it's not that bad, whatever. Draw a card, but it's still definitely not preferred. Okay. Target your own. Gold span because you want to cycle a card. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Okay. 
Okay, Skyclave is alright. But I still don't have a way to deal with... The only way I have to deal with Great Hinge is... <coughs> actually, um, Ugin, so... The creatures aren't even the issue, man. It's just the cards. He keeps replacing everything, man. He wrath it away, he just keeps replacing it again. Except... Right, oh yeah, now I draw my Doom Scar. Nice. Except now... I still think I want to Skyclave this thing away, though. Even though most likely he has a Bone Crusher, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more mana, and I can make four angels. Get rid of that, because I don't want him drawing excess cards. He's already drawing enough cards as it is. Yeah, you'll bone. Okay, Scorching Dragonfire. Wow. Okay, you get a 1-1, one, one, bro. Congratulations. You get no benefits in a 1-1. One, one. Do I want to foretell this wrath or do I want to draw and gain life? Probably, I mean, foretelling it's not that big of a deal, right? Yeah, that's fine. I'll foretell it for the discount because it could make it nice next turn. <coughs> gain two life with Cosmos here. Pretty close to Starnheim for four. Okay, that's that's Starnheim for four, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean this is we're pulling the plug on that. I mean you ju we just kill him so fast with this. The two turn clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Starnheim is definitely a sick finisher. I think it's a little bit underrated too, but. Alright, this hand's not bad. Three lands. So, we keep this. Of course, we're not paying life for that. A Doomscar and a Shatter and a Blast Casket, man. Hopefully, I'm going against something creature based, right? Black mana, I don't know what that is yet. Black green, creature based. Elves. Okay. So since since he's playing elves, I'm gonna first of all get rid of that. Second of all, hold Redain, put that on Protector Shield. I mean, you make a bunch of one ones like that's perfect against elves, man. <clears throat> Protector Shield makes it extremely hard to do anything. Of course, there's some weird um, elves decks that run Binding of the Old Gods, and I'm just like, that's just ridiculous, man. You're gonna put Binding of the Old Gods in your low curve deck as a curve topper? I don't know. In rare cases, it'll work for you, but like, I don't see the point of playing. I don't see the point of playing Land of War either in that, but. <clears throat> I'm gonna scry here because I want to hit my land drop and then guarantee it, so revitalize into it. There we go. There we go. Now I kind of want a Cosmos Elixir, man. Cosmos would just pull me so far ahead. Twin Blade Assassins. What in the hell? Okay, well, I can risk it, draw a card, if I don't hit a land drop. 
Just foretell Doomscar. I feel like that seems better, right? Yeah, that seems better. Alright, that's fine. I'll let him draw a card. For this, I'll let him draw one card. Just to wipe his board and, and also hinder his mana. I'm at six mana, two more, and I can get Ugin. Typically with Ugin, I like to plus. Normally, I know Ugin is like minus and stuff, but if I have to minus, I don't want to have to get rid of my protector shield or my glass casket, so. Okay, another one. Cosmos, man. Cosmos. But he's gonna... Let's save this. Or tell this. Because we already know... Or I'll scry for... I need to land. Okay, that's, that's a good answer, actually. Because we already know he's gonna hit me, so if I Cosmos, he, I just go down anyways. He's gonna hit me for five, so I only get one card off it. And it doesn't really affect the board right now. Like, getting the tomes down and foretelling this is better in the future. <clears throat> yeah, this is a really good answer to... Okay, actually, I'm going to draw with this first. I'm going to hit my land drop, right? See? Never didn't have it. So now I'm going to actually... Get rid of the Tyvar. Get rid of the tie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so my Ugin comes out next turn, which is perfect. And then I can let him kill it. And then get it back with Elspeth Conquer's death. That seems good, too. Kill that Avenger, of course. Of course, we don't want that Avenger on the market. Get that shit out of here. A Wildborn Preserver. Okay. The thing is, he's kind of forced into attacking my Ugin, so... You can't just let Ugin sit there and tick up, man. Okay, man. main deck. Okay, my adversaries, bro. Such a dumb card to have main deck. Okay, kill my Ugin. Congratulations. Actually, that doesn't kill him because. Yeah, I forgot. Wow, that's actually awkward. It's actually very awkward that it didn't kill him and it put him to one. <laughs> All right, anyways, draw, see what we draw. Revitalize. So four here. Doomscar, so he doesn't draw a card. And then I can actually boom to his face. Start gaining life with Cosmos. Next turn, I can revitalize. And gain four with Maze Mind Tome. So then I can actually start drawing with Cosmos. He foretells something. What do you think a foretelling green-black would be? <coughs> foretelling green-black? I mean, there's no telling white, right? Alright, well, just kill the Paragon. That's more damage output. Draw with Tome. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this now. I don't want him drawing cards at all with that. Get my white land out. Fortel Starnheim. Draw a card. Ooh. And then draw another card. Nice. Amirius Call, man, is savage here. What do you think he's got in Fortel? Could be a removal spell. 
He only hits it for one. Not impressive. <clears throat> yeah, the protector shield makes it just very, very annoying. It's just super awkward, man. Oh, he's getting something out of the graveyard. Okay. Return upon the tide. Oh, he's not going to like this, is he? Yeah, you can have two cards, man. It's not a big deal. Look at my board state, man. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put this down. Foretell this. I get to draw a card again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just get a commanding board state right here. Oh, his snow came in on tap too. That's nice. That's nice. Forgot about the old snow taps. The old snow tap McGee. Elder Fang Disciple. Wow. Talk about the weakest damn card you could possibly play. So he foretold this. Whatever the hell it is. What was it? That. That. Just go ahead and finish the job, man. My <clears throat> finish the job. He's just dead next turn. Come on, Cosmos. You're pulling lands off the top, man. There's no way he has a removal spell, right? It's a return upon the tide. That's what he has. <clears throat> and I just kill him in the air, so not a big deal. Can't be anything like Extinction Event. I mean, that would wipe his own creature out. That doesn't do it. He's dead. I mean, I guess he survives one turn, right? But, yeah, you're still going to die. Oh, I just oog in his face. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, this hand ain't bad. Actually, the first hand that I've had that was good while I was on the play. Usually not on the play. And if I am on the play, I have a shit hand. This hand's actually good. Ooh, snow covered too? Oh, yeah. Mono white, dude? Yeah, mono white's gonna love this redain, man. They're gonna really love this redain on the play. What would you do for a Klondike bar? A Kralion spirit. There is an argument to casting the other half, but getting this down now and making him tap his lands is just destructive, man. It's like super destructive. Or should I say obstructive, right? Obstructive is probably the better word. I wanted to make it sound, you know, cooler, so I used the word destructive. Oh my goodness. We're firing on all cylinders today. We're firing on all cylinders today, man. Yoink. Draw a card. Thank you. Ooh, a Skyclave, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the money right here, man. You're going to Skyclave my Redain. I block here. You lose your entire board. I get a 3-3, and then we start this all this whole shenanigan over again. And then whatever your follow-up is, I skyclave it away. See, they don't like that redain, man. They don't like it one bit. <laughs> he has a redain. <laughs> nice redain. Nice redain. Anyways, give me that redain. Mm hmm. Move. Get out of my way. I'm gonna see what I'm gonna draw. Another redain? Yeah. 
You know you love to see it right there, boy. Luris. Wow. What would you do for a Klondike bar? I'm going to attack because I have indestructible. And then I have the four fours to block on the way back. So that's fine. I mean, if you want to block and then get it back next turn, I mean, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Another. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. We're firing today, man. Nice Clarion spirit. <laughs> Clarion spirit. Okay. Congratulations. I guess I am going to see what I'm going to draw, so... I'll take the Revitalize, yeah. Keep that for later. Another Amirius Call. It's gonna just put insane amounts of pressure on this guy. Okay. Alright, you're just gonna die in the air next turn. Next turn, I just attack with everything. Fire up Crawling Barons. Just kill them. I mean, you're supposed to cast the Clarion Spirit first, man. Okay, he's going for the lifelink route. That's not gonna work, though. He cast it backwards. I just kill him in the air, man. Yeah, I don't know what would that that was about, but okay. Bye. All right, I've been I've been going first a lot. Been going first a lot lately, but my hands haven't been that good. Like, this hand is either really good or really bad. Going against mono red. Okay, this hand might be okay then. We're going to go ahead and get this down now. Start scrying for our land drops. The one way we lose this game is we miss our land drops. So then we're pretty much screwed at that point. Hopefully they don't have like an amazing start. Just a fire blade, is that it? That's all he does. I mean that's not that bad. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely better for us there. Foretell this. Scry for our land drops. Trying to get this up to, to gain that four health. Perfect, perfect land right there. So next turn, we just go shatter the sky. Even if he lays Annex down, I think I'm still going to shatter, man, to be honest. Yeah, I'm still going to shat- well, he draws a card off the Annex though, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll just- an yeah, we'll get rid of the Annex first. Okay. And then when he kills my Skyclave, then we can shatter afterwards. We don't want him drawing cards, man. I want to use every advantage I possibly have. I'm going to block this. So if he wants to target it on the death trigger. Oh, you just have the Ember Cleave just ready, huh? Nice. Always. When do they not have Ember Cleave? That's the question. Alright, just kill that. Unfortunately, I have to take two for this. 
but if I can stabilize, you know, I'll be okay. Anax is a good play here. Like, that's what we want, is what I mean. Rimrock, eh, it's okay. Double Rimrock is kind of annoying. But we have the Doom Scar to clean that up. We don't want to give him the opportunity to equip and then he starts attacking. Like, that's a bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's got one card left. Yeah, so we just do that. Alright, draw a card. There's our field. Nice. We want to get to Ugin status, man. Ugin status. I have some. Okay. I have something for that. That's perfect. I think he has a removal in his hand, so I'm casting this. Even though we could potentially get rid of this with Ugin. I'm casting this now. Okay, I want to foretell that, for sure. And this guy is done. He's not having it. <laughs> Alright, I go first again, man. Like, dude, I've been going first a lot, seriously. Like, I'm not sure what to think about that, because I never go first. Just like, this just doesn't feel right, man. Hello? Dude, don't say hello in your damn red deck, dude. Get out of here. You're not allowed to say hello if you're red deck. Okay, we definitely want to get Doom Scar in the pocket, so to speak. Red black, okay, no, never mind. He's just red black, like sacrifice bullshit. Okay, Field of Ruin. I want to field one of his lands. Hopefully, he lays something down that's not basic. Because I want that. Okay, perfect, perfect, man. I want that um, second white source. Gotta get my second white source on mixed, man. Then next turn we go Radiant Fountain straight into Cosmos Elixir. Draw a card. I got it anyway, so I still need to gain the life to draw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a Starnheim on deck. Pretty good draw, man. Pretty good draw, I'm not gonna lie. Loses one life and draws a card. Wow, this guy's aggressive, man. He's aggressive. You know what? Let's let's just foretell. The Doom Scar and draw. This will get us over so we can draw another card. And then it puts pressure on him to actually pressure us, which plays into our Doom Scar more. Like, I could Elspeth Conquer's Death, but I don't have anything to get back. So, like, it's kind of a waste. I want to be able to do that when I back up. Okay, that's a. Look. That's a better Elspeth Conquer's Death target right there anyways, because this thing could be indestructible. Dude, he's just going off with this, this draw, man. Yep, sacrifice it to your Witch's Oven. He lets it happen. Wow. Okay. All right, we're going to do this. I mean, I'm not sure that drawing has been the best option for him, to be honest. We're at seven lands. Yeah, I mean, I'm gaining life, too, so that's not good for you either. We're at seven lands, so one more, we get Ugin. Nine lands is... Wow. 
Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Minions return, bro? So he's gonna get it back and exile my cosmos. Wow. I'm just... Wow. This is so dumb, dude. And he gets my 4-4. Four -four. Well, I guess that's his 4-4, four -four, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, it's fine. But, whatever. Anyways... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have eight next turn, so I can do this into Rankle. So that seems perfectly acceptable. Get rid of that. He's gonna sack it to the oven now. So that's also fine. And then we want to get rid of his token and leave him with nothing. I don't care about exiling that with Ugin. Doesn't really make that much of a dip. Okay. I mean, you probably should have seen who I was going to target first, man. Next turn, we follow up with Ugin. Alright, so we just discard Ugin then. We'll get it back with Elspeth Conquers Death. Six. Mm hmm. Yeah, nice. Nice, buddy. Looks like you're going to be making a little bit of food this turn, buddy. You're going to be making a little bit of food there, buddy. All right, Doomscar. Clean up the board. Yeah, we know. Sack your stupid thing. Make stupid ass food tokens. Let's go. What am I going to draw? Another Ugin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I had to discard that one. I mean, that's fine, though. I'll keep it still. I'll hit that eighth land drop anyway, so then I just have a backup Ugin. Just in case things go crazy. Just in case things get out of control. Yeah, Immersturm is, is an easy target for me to exile. <clears throat> Here comes Eugene. Doing this now in case he has a murderous rider. If I cast this and he has a murderous rider, he kills my Ugin, so. Let's go ahead and get value out of it now. You can sacrifice the stupid predator now, get some more food. But I mean, you're not doing nothing with the food, so. But I guess it's better to have it in your graveyard, anyways. <laughs> it's not dying, man. Oh, he's gonna. Okay. He's gonna sack it. That has flash? Wait a minute. Yeah, I did not know that had flash, bro. That's that's dumb. Yeah, I don't know what this dude's doing. Like, can we hurry up, please? Yeah, sack it. Let's go. Comes back, we know. Amazing, amazing. And then boom, it gets exiled. You done? Okay. God. I think that has flash. That's crazy. It has flash, man. Who plays that trash card, bro? Or it's absolute dog shit, man. Absolute dog shit. Yep, and you're out. It's not. You got nothing to do now. You got six food. And you're just gonna sit there and pass the turn with three witches ovens. While I slowly kill you. Now do you understand? Do you understand? And now... Armageddon. You're dead next turn, man. Unless you have just... 
double removal spell. Oh yeah, I forgot he can eat like a thousand. It's like damn Thanksgiving over here. He's got all this damn food sitting off to the side. Now these are just leftovers. We'll just save these for later. I mean, you're only de delaying the inevitability though here. Let's be honest, man. Let's be brutally honest, bro. You're getting trashed. Ooh, shackles of treachery. Uh. Whoa. Oh. Okay. You know, this long game favors me, though, right? Double shackles of treachery, man. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke, man. Seriously, man. Do not make me laugh, man. Do not make me laugh, bro. Yeah, gain three, sure. Anyways. Take four, and I'm gonna kill you in like two turns now. Because you decided to have double shackles of treachery, which is trash dog shit of a card. Okay, move. Get out of my way. Get your predator out of my way. Not in the mood. Yeah, cool. Cool beans, man. Anyways. Eat your stupid food, yep. I gained six. I gained six life. I'm eating food. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yep, and then you take eight, so... It's gonna slowly delay the inevitable of you slowly dying. Boom! Get owned. Get owned. Recast Croxa from your graveyard. Then I'll exile it or destroy it. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> okay, man. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any of this matters. I'll just get rid of the Doom Scar. It's a redundant copy, so. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna attack with this. He can chump block and sack Witch's Oven, or sack it to the oven if he wants to. I don't really care at this point. Yeah, okay. Thanks, bro. Man, I'm going first like every time now, dude. Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but I'm just like, what is going on? What is going on, man? Is it a full moon? Is it the third solstice and the is Neptune in the in the pattern now? Like <laughs> Some dude's like, I don't believe in that man. That's offensive. Get rid of it now. I love to nullify the null priests. That just like that that little flavor right there seems awesome. Silver smoke ghoul. What in the hay fever is going? <laughs> what in the hay fever is going on in here? Okay, I want Redane on the the artifact. Ugh, annoying ass. Annoying. Yeah, I'll block with this. Because I want them to get the token and then I'm just going to wipe the board. What in the hay fever is going on in here? Dude, they always make me draw, man. What is with these guys when they play Rankle? Like, you don't make me draw, dude. I'm a control deck, man.
One, two, three, four, and then one, two. If I draw an up-tap land, that's perfect, because then... Wonder what he's going to do next turn. <laughs> okay, that's perfect right there, actually. Do I want to do... Actually, no. Do I get this online? What am I drawing? I want to land. One, two, three, four, five, six. I I'm going to take it. I'm going to be greedy and keep this. Because I have a land technically here. And this is a free draw. And this is also a draw. And I have board wipe next turn, so it's like... I, don't, I know what I'm doing next turn, obviously. <clears throat> you going to make me draw again, man? Dude, he's making me draw into my land drops, dude. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Alright. Oh, yeah. Perfect answer to that annoying pest rankle. I have seven lands. This is my eighth land for Ugin. Seven lands. Next turn, I'm going to cast a Mirius Call. We're doing this again? Oh, he gets an Order of Midnight back. Okay. I love the artwork on that, that Order of Midnight, by the way. All right. Yeah, it's fine. This is, this is gravy, man. This is all gravy, baby. Gravy train coming in. Feed the swarm. You gotta pay one for that. And then... Okay. And then now you're limited to two mana play. So, you did the other order at midnight, I guess? Okay, he's not feeling it. Wow. Not feeling it. That's how people are. Yeah, you go you go on a play, you're like, <laughs> I gotta play magic? <laughs> like, what'd you expect? You want me to roll over and let you... Please, come defeat me. I'll let you. <laughs> Hell out of here, man. That's trash.